In this video, I'm going to share with you three reasons why you should fast and pray, and more specifically, why you should consider fasting and praying to start out this new year. You know, we just started uh, 2024. It's a brand new year, and really the only way that you can see a change in your life is by pressing into the things of God, and fasting and prayer is a powerful tool that God has given us to do just that. And so on this episode, I'm going to share with you three reasons why we as believers believers should fast and pray. And there's many more reasons than just these three, but I'm going to start off with these three and I will be doing more videos on this topic. So I want to encourage you, if you have not already to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that you can be notified when we upload more videos about this topic. And so let's jump right into it. The first reason that I have listed here, uh, and probably the most important reason why we should fast and pray is because Jesus fasted and prayed right? And we want to be like Jesus. Jesus fasted and prayed. And so, you know, he said, he, Jesus told us the same works that you see me do, you will do and greater. And so we know that Jesus had a supernatural life. He saw people healed, uh, delivered. He casted out demons. He raised the dead. He had power on his life, right? And so if we're going to do the same works that Jesus did, if we're going to walk in that kind of power, then we also have to do the same things that he did when it comes to consecration. Jesus consecrated himself to God. He showed us how we can access this power. Power, and it's through fasting and prayer. And so one of the, the examples we see of when Jesus fasted and prayed is in Luke chapter four. Luke chapter four, in verse one, it says that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and he went in the wilderness led by the Holy Spirit. So in the previous chapter, in Luke chapter three, right, we see Jesus baptized and the Holy Spirit comes upon him, right? He's, he is baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so he's filled with the Holy Spirit. He's being led by the Holy Spirit. And many Christians, we're, we're, many of us are in that position, right? We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We are, we are uh, looking for the Holy Spirit to, to lead us and to guide us in our life. But understand that it's not until after he fasted for, in, in this instance, he fasted for 40 days. And then after he fasts, it says in verse 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. So he started off led by the Holy Spirit, but when he came out of a fast, he was under the power of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus fasted as a way to access spiritual power. And this, let me get this straight. I have to take a little side journey here because some people will not understand this. Fasting is not about earning something from God. Fasting has nothing to do with moving God or trying to get God to give you something. That's not it at all, right? Jesus had everything. Jesus was God, right? Right? But he emptied himself and he was living as a man uh, anointed by the Holy Spirit. And understand why did Jesus fast? The purpose of fasting has nothing to do with God. Fasting weakens your flesh and builds up your spirit. The prayer part is what builds up your spirit. Fasting, so you're weakening the flesh and you're building the spirit. Why? So that the power that is already resident in your spirit can be released, right? The Bible says that we have a treasure in our earthen vessel. This treasure, it's Christ in us. It's the power of God on the inside of us, but it's veiled by our flesh, right? So we have to weaken the flesh and strengthen the spirit so that more of God's power can flow out of our life, right? So that's what this was all about. That's why Jesus was fasting. He was taking dominion over his flesh, right? And, and building up his spirit so that that power could flow in his ministry. And so, you know, the Bible also says, Jesus said, a servant is not greater than his master. If Jesus had to fast to crucify his flesh, how much more do you and I need to fast, right? How much more do we need to fast? If Jesus had to fast in order to see power operate in his life, uh, how much more should you and I be fasting and praying to crucify the flesh, to humble ourselves before God and to strengthen our spirits, right? So that's the number one reason why we should fast and pray is because Jesus fasted and prayed. And so we should do the same. And here's the second reason. This, this is gonna change your life. This, what I'm about to tell you, changed my entire understanding of prayer, my understanding of Christianity really, really in general. I'm going to read you out of Daniel chapter 9 and chapter 10. 
The second reason why you should fast and pray to break the resistance that is blocking the answers to your prayers. And so this is huge to understand. Huge, because many people, they'll pray something, and as soon as it doesn't manifest in their life immediately, they automatically say, oh, well, it must not be the will of God. It must, it must not be God's will if they don't see it manifest immediately. But that is not what the Bible teaches us. When you discover what the will of God is, you have to hold fast to that and, and contend to see it in your life. So let's read this. Let's read this. Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to start off with Daniel chapter nine, verse two. It says in the first year of of his reign, Daniel understood by the books, the numbers of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Okay. So what does all this mean? Daniel is saying he's reading the book of Jeremiah and he sees in the word of God and he realizes, Hey, we should not be in captivity longer than 70 years. He begins to see something in the word of God that the will of God for his people that is that they would come out of this Babylonian captivity that they were in. So that's the first thing you have to discover what the will of God is from his word. And, he, and so what, did, what was his response? His response wasn't, oh, well, if God wants to see us set free, God will do it. Amen. God is sovereign. Of course, God is sovereign, but, but he said it in his word and he was waiting for someone to rise up and to pray the will of God into this land, into the people of God. And so this is what it says in verse three. He says, then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting. So Daniel said, Hey, I can see this in the word of the Lord. And I want to see this come to pass for the people of God. So I'm going to set myself to pray and fast for this to come to pass for us to be delivered from this captivity. And this is what you have to understand. If let me tell you, the things of God are not automatic. The will of God for your life is not automatic. And you know, people leave everything up to God. And understand that God has given us his will and his word and he's waiting for you to discover it and waiting for you to lay hold of it. And fasting and prayer is a powerful tool that God has given us to be able to lay hold of what the word of God says belongs to us. And that's what Daniel did here. Daniel didn't just wait for for God to do something about it and say, oh, well, must not be the will of God for us to be set free. So I'm just gonna, you know, we're gonna stay in captivity for another 70 years. No, no. No, he saw it in the word of God and he said himself, I'm going to pray. I'm going to cry out to God and I'm going to see this fulfilled in my generation. And so let's skip over to chapter 10. Chapter 10, uh, he, he prays again. Chapter 10, verse one, it says, he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Verse two, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks. So that is 21 days. For 21 days, it says he ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So for 21 days, Daniel fasted for 21 days. And you'll see throughout the Bible, there's different lengths of fast. You could have a one day fast. You could have a fast from sun up to sundown. You could have a three day fast, a seven day fast, a 21 day fast. And we saw Jesus did a 40 day fast. Uh, and so Daniel here, it says for 21 days, he ate no food. And I'll just throw this in while we're, we're right here. F- biblical fasting is not eating food. You not watching TV for 21 days is a good thing, but that is not a fast. Biblical fasting, the literally the Hebrew word means to shut your mouth, to not let anything enter your mouth. It's to not eat. It's to abstain from food. So biblical fasting is not you fasting social media. It's not you fasting video games. Okay. Because if that's the case, then everybody, you know, in the 1800s fasted their entire life right? So that's not fasting. The strongest desire of your flesh is to eat food. So when we talk about fasting, I'm talking about abstaining from food. And we'll talk more about practicals at the end. Um, But so Daniel didn't eat for 21 days. And so because of that, at the end of those 21 days, he had a visitation. An angel visited him. And the angel said to Daniel, I want you to catch this. If you don't catch anything else from this, this broadcast, catch this. The angel said, this. Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. 
Your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. Understand this. Fasting does not get God to hear you. From the first day you pray, whether you're fasting or not fasting, God hears your prayer and God answers your prayer. If you, the Bible says that the, that the ears of the Lord are open to the prayers of the righteous. If you are righteous, if you are a born again believer, God's ears are open to your prayer. You're not fasting to get God to hear you. Okay. So the angel wanted Daniel to know, Hey, it didn't take 21 days for God to answer your prayer. He's going to tell him what was up. Why did, why did it take 21 days? He says, but the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the archangels came to help me for I had been left alone there with the Kings of Persia. In verse 14, he said, now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. And so he was getting his answer. And so he says, why did it take 21 days of Daniel persisting with fasting and prayer? He said that he was being blocked. The answer to Daniel's p prayer had been sent on day one. God heard him on day one, but it had been blocked by a demon prince, by a demon, okay, by demonic resistance, okay? And so, but his fasting and prayer and his persistence actually loosed more angelic help for his answer to come to him. And so this is what I want you to catch. You can either be the type of Christian that you pray for something and because it doesn't happen, you change your whole doctrine. You say, yeah, well, I thought that God, you know, wanted to heal so-and-so. I thought God wanted to give me a breakthrough and whatever, but because you don't see it happen, you just change your whole doctrine. You think that God, it's not the will of God, all kind of crazy stuff. But Daniel didn't do that. Daniel persisted. Daniel persisted in his prayer life. And I want, I want to read you this out of the Dake annotated reference Bible. Dake is a great theologian. And this is what he said about this passage. He said, uh, this is on Daniel 10 verse 13. It says, I have come to answer the prayer that you have prayed. This shows exactly what Daniel prayed for and demonstrates that the very words said in prayer are heard and answered. Everything you ask for in prayer is heard and answered. Too many times religious teachers today argue that what we ask may not be granted, but that God will give us what we need and what is best for us. In other words, God will substitute something in place of what we have asked for. There is not a word in scripture which teaches such a doctrine. God has promised to give all men what they ask for. God will give you what you ask for in prayer, believing even the exact things that you say in word. Daniel got exactly what he asked for. There was resistance and he had to persist for 21 days in fasting and prayer. But let me tell you that he got exactly what he asked for. God hears your prayers and God will answer your prayers. And I want to read you this as well. This is another note on verse 13. It says that over all the governments of this world, Satan has trusted angels who are responsible for carrying out his will in those governments. And I'll skip down. Hence, wars between the two groups of angels uh, in the heavenlies, all wars are lost or won on earth as a result of wars lost or won by these heavenly ar armies. Why do I want to read you that? Because I want you to understand that there are things going on in the spiritual realm. Many times people just give up. They just whatever you, it, I want you to understand there's things going on in the spiritual realm. And when you fast and pray, the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much, making tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. As you fast and pray, you have no idea the tremendous power that is being released on your behalf that is dynamic and it's working. Don't give up and quit just because you don't see the manifestation immediately. Immediately. There is power being released when you fast and pray. And there are things going on in the spiritual realm that you don't know about. But let me tell you this, when you fast and pray, it looses angelic help on your behalf. That's what happened here. There were multiple angels loosed as Daniel persisted. He did not give up and quit. He believed what the word of God said. He believed that God's people would be loose from captivity. Why? Because he found it in the word of God. And let me tell you right now, whatever promise that you have found in the word of God concerning your life, concerning whatever situation you're believing for, you hold fast to that word and you do not uh, release your confession of faith. Faith, hold fast to your confession of faith and persist. And I want to encourage you, 
to take a step of faith, to push away the plate for at least a day or two or three, push away the plate and say, you know, you know, no, you know what? I'm putting my flesh under. I'm, I'm contending to see the power of God in my life. And like I said, it's not to move God. It's not to move God. It's to crucify your flesh and to build up your spirit so that more power can be released. And next week, I'm going to, I'm going to do a whole podcast talking more about this. So, so stay tuned because there's a lot to unpack with this topic. Uh, and so that's the second reason why we should fast and pray is to break resistance to the answer uh, to our prayers. There is resistance Man, and I don't, and that's why I want to encourage you. Don't just give up and quit on things you've been believing for. Fast and pray because people, let me tell you this. People have been believing for things for 15 years that could have been done like this if they would have just fasted for three days. Fasting and prayer breaks something in the spirit. It's a weapon that God has given us. And I want to encourage you as we're starting off this new year, take time. Take time to consecrate yourself in fasting and prayer and make up your mind that this is the year that you are going to see the manifestation of what you've been believing God for. And so this is the third reason why we should fast and pray is to keep the fire of God burning in your life. Many of you probably have heard people say, yeah, well, you know, that's great. You're on fire for God right now, but we all have dry seasons. I want to tell you today, you do not have to have a dry season. Having a dry season is up to you. It's not that God is not up in heaven giving you a dry season and trying to teach you a lesson. A dry season is up to you. The reason that people are lukewarm is because they're carnal. It has nothing to do with the devil. It has nothing to do with God. Being lukewarm, uh, being dry has to do with being carnal. Okay. And so, and why is this good news? It's good news because it's something that's in our hands. If you're in a dry season, you have the power to break out of that dry season. You're not waiting for something to happen in your life. You can make a decision. I'm not going to be dry anymore. I'm not going to be lukewarm anymore. How do you keep the fire of God alive in your life? It's through fasting and prayer because it's your flesh. Your flesh is what um, wants to block up the fire of God, wants to put out the fire. When, you're, when you feed your flesh more than you feed your spirit, you're not going to be on fire for God. You're going to be dry. But when you fast, what you're doing is you're starving the flesh and you're feeding your spirit through prayer, through, through reading the word of God. And that's what stirs up that fire in your life. And so I want to read you this scripture, Isaiah 58, 11. Isaiah 58, I encourage you to read the whole chapter. It's all about um, prayer and fasting. And God talks about the type of fast that pleases him. And he goes on to say, when you fast like this, the way he describes in verse 11, it says, you will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. God is giving us the master key to never being dry, that you become like a spring of water whose waters fail not. It reminds me of what Jesus said in John chapter seven, that out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. You will be an ever flowing river when you are a person that takes time to fast and pray. So take dominion over your flesh and say, no, I'm not going to just uh, live according to my carnal desires. I'm not going to be carnally minded, but I'm going to put my flesh under subjection to the spirit of God. I'm going to stir up the fire of God. I'm going to rekindle the flame of God on the inside of me through fasting and prayer. It's up to you. God didn't say that he was going to stir up the fire of God in your life. He told you, stir up the fire, stir up the inner fire that came on the inside of you when hands were laid on you. It's up to you and I. We have the opportunity to stir ourselves up, to, to allow this ever flowing river of life to flow unhindered in our life. And what is that? That's the power of God. That's what I was talking about in the beginning. The, the more you subdue the flesh, the greater amount of that river, that power is able to flow out from you. And what does this do for you? It makes you a Christian where you're not running around in need of prayer, in need of a breakthrough. You become the person that carries power. You carry breakthrough. You are the one going around praying for other people, seeing other people healed, seeing other people delivered. This is what sets you apart, that you will have power in your own life, that you're going to have the fire of God burning in your own life through fasting and prayer, through fasting and prayer. And so I want to encourage you, as I just shared with you, these are three 
Uh, there's many more than this, but these are three reasons why I want to encourage you to take time this year to fast and pray. And I'll go ahead and tell you what me and my husband, Justin, are doing with along with many other ministries uh, in this nation and around the world. We are starting this year with 21 days of prayer and fasting to consecrate 2024 to the Lord. And we want to encourage you to join us. Uh, you know, we started on the second, but you can start today whenever you're watching this. Uh, and what we're doing my husband, Justin, he's not breaking. He's doing the full fast. I'm mixing it up, doing some uh, six to six, some full days. And really what we're doing, the six to six is great because it's, it's something that anyone can do. If you are working a full-time job, uh, especially if you have a physical job, six to six is something that everyone can do. What does that mean? 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. water only. So after 6 p.m., you can eat, you can eat like normal. Uh, and, you know, that, that's something. And the Bible talks about it in the book of Judges. That's, uh, it talks about how that they fasted until sundown and the Lord gave them a great victory. So it is a biblical fast, sun up to sundown, uh, water only. And as you do that, you can take those, your lunch break when you would normally be eating lunch and early in the morning and take time to pray, to seek the Lord. And I believe that God is going to give you great breakthroughs and you're going to begin to see things manifest so quickly. And in the, in the next few episodes, I'm going to share with you some amazing testimonies, things that God has done in my own life. When I started fasting and praying a few years ago, I began to see miracles breaking forth in my life like that. And I'm going to share some of those with you. It's going to greatly encourage you. And so I want you to let us know in the comments, if you are joining us on this fast, whether it be 21 days, or maybe you're just doing three days or seven days whatever you're doing, let us know in the comments so we can continue to pray for you. Uh, and, and we're going to keep you, uh, just encouraged as you do this time of fasting and prayer. And I believe that you're going to have the greatest year that you have ever had in Jesus mighty name.